Aloha, and thank you for joining us today. Today, we're gonna make a very special dish, and this is something I've only eaten once before, and I've never made before. But what makes this dish so special is that it comes with a very special story. Once upon a time, on an island far, far away in Chile. I became friends with sea lions and horses and a group of women who loved the ocean. They told me about a dish called disco that had a little bit of everything from the sea. The island chef wanted to make it, but she needed an octopus, a pulpo. So I said that I would try to find one. And the girls said that they were coming with me. We swam out together and found a pupil in the shallows. I showed them how I tickle it out of its hole and bite the brain for a quick death. And the girls all thought that was so cool. We swam out to deeper water to gut the octopus and the whole ocean became alive. I swam down and saw a yellow tail. In Chile, they're called viriola. And I was able to spear it but it got caught in a cave deep, deep below. I had to swim down and use my knife to kill it and untangle it underwater before bringing it back up. My friends all watched over me as I did. Right when we all thought the day couldn't get any better, we got surrounded by even bigger videola in an even bigger school. I had such a little gun for such a big fish and such a far shot, but I took it and I held on tight. The girls were shrieking with joy and more and more fish surrounded us. We could not believe our eyes. Everyone worked together as a team and that day, three women got enough food to feed the whole island community. Your dad was there too, freaking out over it all. <laughs> As we called it a day and swam back in, our hearts were so happy. We shared the fish with everyone we knew and we ate all parts. We felt so grateful for each other and for what the ocean gave us. But our favorite dish was the disco, made out of the bones of our fish and the pupil itself, and a little bit of everything from the sea. The end. I hope you like the story. Alrighty. <laughs> I think we're ready to get cooking. Thanks for joining us for story time. But we got some food to make. I really don't know how to make this dish. I know usually I wing it. But in this case, I think I should call for backup. I'm going to call Uncle Ramon in Chile and see if he can walk us through it. Hello, Kimmy. Ramon. Hi. Finally, we made it. It looks like you had a great day of fishing the other day. Oh yeah, it was a good spear fishing day with my dad. Amazing. Okay, I was just wondering if you could take me through the steps of making disco. I've been just trying to like Google it or look it up. I can't find any information on it. I love it. This is super typical for fisherman communities, but also what it is, you mix pretty much the people between mountains and with the coastline people, and they mix all the ingredients. Seaweed, mussels, clams, fish, lobster, chicken, chorizo, and veggies, potatoes, cilantro, and white wine is always important. They drink and they make a big party. Amazing. So what is the real name of disco? Cocimiento. It's not just one recipe for this. Wherever you have, actually you can put anyways, I don't know, a piece of pineapple or something. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ramon. You're the only person I knew to call. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my god. Look how, how chubby how he got. Send love to everyone in Hawaii. Bye, Ramon. Bye. I got to call 
our good friend Ramon Navarro all the way in Chile to get some advice on how to make this disco. I learned that disco is a nickname for this dish, but the way that it all started was people from the mountains would come and meet people from the ocean and they would share what they have and so that's why this dish has everything like from the ocean but it, it also has meat it also has vegetables it has a whole variety of things that come from the land this dish disco it changes from region to region and in some places the meat will be goat and the seafood will be lobsters in other places they don't have lobsters or goats i was given some homemade sausage from the big island and so that is going to be our meat. And what I love about this dish is, you know, what I just learned today is it's about community sharing. It's about using what you have from the land and the ocean. And so even though I might not have the same ingredients <clears throat> that we had in Chile, that's what makes this dish special is that it's about taking a little bit of everything from your region, from your area and putting it in a beautiful pot together. Ramon said, start with the meat. Disco is basically, it's very uh, seafoody. It's a seafood brothy, soupy thing. And Ramon said, if he were me, he would definitely put a fish head in there in the beginning. And I do have a fish head. It's attached to a fish that I speared a few days ago. This is a yellow spot papillo. I'm gonna chop his head off. You ready for this, Justin? Yeah. Okie dokie, hold on to your seat, buddy. Oh, sometimes when you just have a stressful day. You needed that, huh? Oh. oh, yes. Now we have our lovely fish head. I'm really enjoying this. I'm really glad that Ramon told me to put a fish head in there. But another thing that we had, had in our disco was lobsters. So, to make up for not having lobsters, just so happens we have some beautiful Kona crabs. These are such cool crabs that live in the sand. I grew up fishing for these with my dad and honestly, it's like sacrilegious to cook them. Growing up here in Hawaii, you only eat these things raw, which sounds weird, but it's so good. You chop it up, you put it in a marinade and you suck the sweet meat right out. But for the sake of our Hawaii style disco, we're gonna use these. Um, I asked Ramon, should I clean them first, put them in first, and I loved his answer. He said, let's smash one and put it in in the beginning to really get the flavor, and then the rest you can kind of clean and put in in nice little pieces. I really love that because a lot of times people clean you know, crab before they cook it, and that is nice and clean, but so many cultures, including my own, believe that you lose all the flavor that way. When you cook a crab whole with pretty much guts and all, like we call it the miso here, you get, you get the true flavor. Did you smash? Whoops. Um, I'm gonna put that right in there. It's pretty cool. One thing I actually forgot is that Ramon said, first, we need to do the meat. I believe he said, do the chiles. So I just got a whole bunch of these red jalapenos. One of the most important ingredients is what it sounds like no matter what region you're in is wine. He said to use white wine and that your broth should be at least 30 to 40 percent wine. I can definitely smell that chili. I hope I didn't make it too hot but here's some wine to wash it down. Ramon said to go for it. He said not to use an expensive wine. Four dollars on sale. Looks fabulous. Moving along. Okay, so this was like what we kept in that first crab. I just peel off all the gills. Okay. Head off. Cut these now into pieces. Pot is steaming like crazy. Ooh, that is. Okay, so we should add some water to this concoction. And I'm gonna just fillet this fish because we're gonna also add fish to it at the end though, because fish cooks so quickly. 
that Ramon was very, very clear with me to let everything cook for about 40 minutes. And then when it's all looking done, put your fish fillets right at the top and just let it finish. And the next part of our ocean edition is this beautiful pulpo, as they say in Chile, or as we say in Hawaii, he'e, or taco. So what I did to this octopus is I kind of like boiled, I simmered it. I simmered it in water until it was tender. Before I did that, I took the time to really clean it with salt and massage it. That's something that we show how to do in our octopus in our octopus video. So if you want to check that out, feel free. But once I did the cleaning, tenderizing process, then I just simmered it in a pot of water. So as you can see, this pupo, this he'e, is very, very tender. Should I add the potatoes or the octopus? I'd do the potatoes first because you already simmered the I octopus. Think, I think you're right. As you see, I'm just using the same cutting board and same knife for everything because it's all going in the same pot. Ramon also said I could add rice. He just warned, like, don't add too much rice. It's not a paella. Probably no need. Okay, potatoes in the pot. I feel like some chunky tomatoes. Squeeze out the tomato seeds and juice. So tomatoes next. So I have my simmered octopus, my raw crab, my fish fillets ready to go in there. But I'm going to let that cook probably for about 20 minutes and let everything kind of develop. And then I'm going to put them in, see what happens. So the name of this dish is disco as I learned it, but it's fascinating to me that Ramon said that the real name is cocimiento. And the reason why <clears throat> they call it disco today is because disco is the name of this, not this tractor part, but this tiller part, the part that digs up the holes in farming. And when that piece of machinery gets old, they actually take that disco off and they repurpose it into this kind of like a walk on a stand with a dish below where you, the, the fire goes here, the food goes there, and that's what you cook cocimiento in. And so it's just now called disco after the name of that farming machine. You look like a peacock. You look like a peacock. Shake your little tail feather. This is our editor, Lexi Kaili. <laughs> I think she's officially Buddy's first crush. Because you love Auntie Lexi. <laughs> <laughs> oh He's not letting go. He's so you're a little flirt. I feel like the disco that I had, I had rice in it. Ramon said, oh yeah, you can definitely add rice in it. Just don't add too much because you want it to be a soup, not a paella. And you want it to be soupy. And it is soupy and I have potatoes, but there's just a part of me that's just like, add a little rice, just add a little. I'm gonna add a little. Oh, I hope I didn't mess it up. And then next, the crab and octopus and fish. So our disco is simmering away, looking beautiful. I think it's time to add in the, the pulpo, the he'e, and our kona crab. Take a little peek. This is like gold right here, these kona crabs. And now, octopus. There's so much stuff in here, I, I can't even stir it. I bet you that's why it helps to cook it in that wok-like shape. You can move it around a little more. I'm just going to give it some of that beautiful Kona sea salt. I was told to garnish with cilantro, finish with cilantro, but I also want that cilantro really infused within the soup. So I'm gonna chop the stems. I know a lot of people don't use the stems or feel that they're bitter, but I think they're actually great to cook with. And I'm gonna mix that within the disco first, just to get that. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> 
The rice is, looks like it's cooked really good. I'm liking how this is looking. Yum. For as many things that are in there, it's not overpowering at all. It's still very delicate and I love it. Like I put a whole bottle of wine, by the way, I finished off the rest of the wine in there and yet it's not too much acid. I feel that little gradual heat from the chilies, but that's not too much. And even all of the different seafoods together, it's still this very delicate, structured, amazing broth. But without going on too long, we're going to add now the fish, which Ramon said, just put it right on top. And the longer it just simmers together, I think the stronger the flavor is going to get. But right now, I feel like this is something that could just be served in a fine dining restaurant because it's just like this really nice, like savory and comforting, but at the same time, delicate and almost sweet. Not sweet like sugar, but sweet like, like crab and seafood and all those great, beautiful things. So we're going to cover this up and let it finish. Oh my goodness. That looks ready. Okay, I'm gonna finish it with some fresh, beautiful cilantro. Kind of just like toss it lightly. I don't know how else to say it. I don't know if I even should be tossing it. I mean, it's still quite soupy, but yeah, there's just so much stuff in there and the rice and the potatoes are going to give off their starches, make it a bit thicker, which I like. So now it's truly a seafood stew. Dinner is served and it looks so beautiful. Oh, it is so heavy. Oh my gosh. There's a lot of stuff in this pot. Oh boy. Wow, I am very, very excited. Fresh bread from the bakery on the corner. Okay, and it finally cooled down today. It was such a hot day and now it's nice and cool, which is perfect temperature. This is the yellow spot papil. There's octopus, see the octopus in here? Let's just put that in there. There's Kona crab. Whoa, there's rice, potatoes, locally made sausage, tomatoes. This is all the goodness. I mean, literally of the land and the ocean that surrounds us. And that's what, that's what this dish is all about. <laughs> I'm so particular with my bites. Has a little bit of sausage. I'm gonna go for a little bit of octopus. There's obviously rice. Yeah, and the broth just has all the flavors of everything melting together. <laughs> like you remember? Oh my gosh. Just like I remember, it is divine. To say perfect for this one would be an understatement. It is absolutely excellent. I'm happy I added the rice because it's still very soupy, but now it has just a little more body to it. All the different flavors of the seafood combined with just a little bit of the sausage flavor just it gives it this beautiful balance of delicate and hearty, all in a bowl. <laughs> but he thought you were going to him. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, this disco is so amazing, but I think what's even more amazing is just the memories that it brings back. Doesn't it bring back those awesome memories, Justin? Yeah, that was fun. Of just going diving with those awesome women and just how magical and how empowering that felt. 
And now being able to just relive it all by recreating this meal, it feels so special. And this is something, I'm gonna be making the Hawaii version of disco for years to come. And I just know that when Buddy eats it, he's gonna grow up knowing these stories. And I really also wanna thank my good friend, Ramon Navarro for just coaching me through it. He is a great human. He's a big wave surfer, a diver, and he's a fisherman's son. In fact, there's a movie out about him called A Fisherman's Son. Thank you so much for joining us. And right now, the links that you see on the screen, they're the true heart and soul of this dish of this episode. We have the true story of that island, those wonderful women and the time we spent there. We have Ramon's story, which is just one of the most beautiful stories, so check that out. And then of course, please subscribe and we'll see you back next week. Yeah, buddy. <laughs>